every every day I get convinced more and more about the evils of eating meat, especially in 2023. So th- this is Jesus, more proof that Jesus did not eat fish. He did not eat meat. Whether you like it or not, Jesus was vegan. Um, I did a, a hour long sermon explaining Luke chapter four, because I already know what you're going to say. You know, some some people, especially the, the Hebrew Israelites, which are worse than the Christians when it comes to the love for the death of animals. They love the taste of blood, love the thought of torturing and murdering God's creation. And so people before I even before they won't even listen to a second of this. They'll be all in the comment section. Paul, 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 Paul. Paul was a food addict. The Apostle Paul was a food addict. And Paul, he did not want to submit to the knowledge. That the that the Nazarene and the Essenes of of the 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 chief, the more chief and head apostles, such as the Apostle Peter and the brother of Jesus Christ, the Apostle James, who followed in the who walked with Jesus and knew that Jesus or Yeshua, they knew he was a vegan and they were trying to implement those ways. And Paul didn't want to hear it. He wanted to hold on to the right to eat that death. He wanted to hold on to the right. And that's why that's one of the reasons why he had poor health. His eyesight was bad, as the scriptures clearly point to. Paul had bad eyesight. And of course, we know that eating meat clogs up the blood vessels leading to the eyes, builds parasites in the gut. But I'll talk more about that later. I'll talk more about that later here. But uh, the reason why I went off on that is because I know that before people even listen to this video, their their idolatry for something that remember, we're, we're, we're talking about something that has no nutritional value. That That's the thing. We're, we're talking about something that has no benefit whatsoever to the black community. None. A, a nobody, no community, white, black, yellow. There's no benefit to eating meat. There's no benefit to eating fish, none whatsoever. The American Heart Association of the, is of the devil and all of these other organizations that try to promote fish eating as something that's healthy. It's not healthy. You can get your omega threes and your omega six from fruits and then you can take a algae derived DHA EPA. There's nothing that we need that we cannot get as human beings from fruits and herbs to state. Otherwise, you are blaspheming the most high because he said, be fruitful and multiply. Genesis 1 26 and then Genesis 1 29. He said, I have given you fruit to be your food. Fruit is your meat. That's what he said. Then even after he allowed us. To learn the hard way by acquiescing to our demands to eat fair. Well, why did he allow it? So you can learn through death, through dying, through suffering. That's what life is about, learning through choices. That's why he gave you a choice. But as soon as God took back over the diet, what did he do? As soon as he brought our ancestors out of that, out of the land of sin, what did he do? The first thing he did, did was restore the plant-based diet. He put their butts on herbs. He gave them coriander from coriander seeds. That was the manna. The manna was not bread. Bread is not a health food, brothers and sisters. Bread is a survival food. I'm not saying don't stock up on bread and grains because those are great for survival foods. But when you're talking about health, bread is a processed food. No, that manna was coriander. That manna was herbs. He put them right back on Genesis 129. And that herb was, and those herbs were important for purifying their blood. And it's all symbolic. They left sin. They left Egypt, the land of sin. And the Most High was sending them through a process of purification. And he put them on herbs. And then them stupid Negroes cried out for fried chicken. And he gave them chicken, pigeons, quail. 
And now 3000 years later, you Negroes want to argue with me all day long, back and forth about some doggone birds and eating animal flesh. It's the same spirit, the same idolatrous, torturous, murderous spirit today. Won't even listen to the video. I did a whole hour, so I'm not going over Luke. Jesus did not eat fish. He did not feed the multitudes fish. I explained that in part one. You can watch that in the description box if you really want to learn. And here I want to give further proof that just seals the deal. So again, yes, the most high Leviticus chapter 11 is not the dietary laws. Yahuwah, God never said that was the dietary law. He never said that. That's what man made up. Translator said that. That's not the dietary laws. The dietary laws is that everything we eat and drink is to the glory of God, which ironically comes from, from Paul. But again, I'll talk about him later. But that's the dietary law. The dietary law is Genesis 129. And it's repeated all throughout the scriptures. The doggone dietary law, that is an acquiescence of death. That is the Lord for his own purposes in his infinite wisdom and in knowing what it takes to develop us into his complete image and knowing that we have to go through a process of learning good and evil. And so that is him letting us learn the hard way. OK, I will allow, I will let you eat the flesh. I will let you learn the hard way. I've given you the right way, but you want to do it this way. OK, here I will allow you to do it, but I will put all of these restrictions on it. I'll try to make it nearly impossible for you to do it because I'm here to tell you today. Ain't nobody obeying. Ain't no meat eaters obeying no dietary laws. You are not obeying the true dietary, the true instructions on how to kill yourself by eating meat. You're not even doing that right. You're not supposed to have a speck of blood left in that meat, according to the scriptures, not a speck of it. And even the way the animal is raised, there's a certain way. So 99 percent of you meat eaters, you're not obeying no so-called dietary laws anyway. And we know the Christian church ain't doing it because they eat pork and catfish and all the things that that he that he strictly said. If you're going to do it, you still not supposed to do this. These are the select animals I'll let you experiment on your body with. But all of these you're not supposed to eat. We don't even do that. But then the so-called Hebrew Israelites and other brothers and sisters and other people who do try to do it, they're not doing it right. They're not doing it right. And even if you are doing it right, you're still wrong. Because we have so much more knowledge today than we had back then. That's why he allowed it. Stop asking me that. It's an acquiescence of death so you can learn. Yes, the Lord will let us be stupid to teach us a lesson. Yes, he will. And that's an example in scripture. Parents, we do the same thing. We teach our children, but sometimes we have to let them bump their heads so they can learn the hard way. Yes. So we as parents understand that we give our children the optimal way. But you have to leave some wiggle room for them to fall. You can't force children to do to, to not ever do wrong. You have to lead and guide them in the best way you can with the hope that they will return to the righteous way that you taught them. And so if we understand that as stupid parents, as puny, dumb human beings, how much more does the heavenly father understand that? And so he went on ahead and allowed us. He knows it's not healthy. He knew it would kill us. It dropped our lifespan. 967 years old, Methuselah, then King David, who's supposed to be a man after, uh, after God's own heart. He barely makes it to 80 years old. See what happened? We're supposed to learn and grow. But some of us don't want to learn and grow. But many of you all listen to this video. You do like, share, like, share, like and share with your flesh eaten Christian, Hebrew, Muslim friends. Whatever spiritual, religious, whatever names and titles you want to say, share with them. First Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 26. First Corinthians, the last enemy 
to be destroyed is death. When Jesus Christ returns, 1 Corinthians 15, 25, he will put all enemies under his feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. That's the purpose of Jesus. He died to end death. So why would you eat death if you're really a follower of Jesus? And why would you teach that Jesus eat death? Look how evil those translators are. I'm, I'm telling you right now on the authority of the most high God of the universe. I'm telling you that the translations you're reading, that's, tell, that's stating that Jesus rose from the dead. And after defeating death, that he ate a piece of death in the form of a, of a piece of fish. I'm telling you, that is a translation of Satan. Those translators of, of, of their father, the devil, they are liars like their father, the devil. And they will have their reward in the lake of fire judgment for twisting the holy scriptures to justify the gluttonous consumption of flesh. Don't you dare tell me food is not spiritual to where they literally sold their souls to the devil just to make it appear as if it's okay, as if to try to justify because they knew they had nothing else. They knew they had nothing else. There was nothing else and they had to forge that in the Bible. It's a forgery. And I explained that in part one. Why would he do that? He died to end death, but then he resurrects and eat death. Why of all the things in the world would Jesus wake up from the dead and put some death in his mouth? Why would he poison his bloodstream like that? With all that cholesterol and saturated fat and that toxic animal protein that we know causes cancer. Why would Jesus do something stupid like that? Why wouldn't he have woke up and ate an apple? Ate an orange. They tried too hard, brothers and sisters. You all don't see the illicticity of that. The last enemy to be abolished is death. So why would he eat death? He's coming. He died to end death. Death is going away. So one of the best ways to show that you love Jesus and that you are a follower of Jesus is to abolish all forms of death in your life. So stop participating in the killing of God's creation. That's proof right there. Jesus didn't eat no fish or no meat and didn't feed the multitudes fish and meat. Second Timothy, he stopped them from fishing. He said, I'll make you fishes of men. Stop murdering animals and let me teach you how to be fishers of men. Let me teach you how to save lives. Stop murdering animals for a living and let me teach you how to save lives. He took the most hardcore meat eaters and he turned them into vegans, into plant based vegans. That's what he did. And they defended that way. Second Timothy chapter one, verses 10 and now. He has made it plain to us by the appearing of Christ Jesus, our Savior. He broke the power of death. This is Paul, right? This is Paul contradicting himself. On one hand, you're defending the right to eat death, to eat meat. But then you're writing these beautiful scriptures. See, you see the confusion. But didn't Paul state that himself? Why do I do the things I know I shouldn't do? Who will deliver me from this body of death? Paul admitted there was a war waging within him. And if you think that the reason why most of the New Testament letters are Paul's writings, if you think that's a coincidence, you're sadly mistaken. Catholicism strikes again. You all know how many councils they had. Just taking book, rip, just ripping books out of the Bible. The version that we are reading, the, the versions that we have today, brothers and sisters, we don't even have even close to the true, original, inspired word of the Most High. Did you know Moses himself actually wrote over three hundred books of Scripture? 
They removed all those Bibles, every last one of them. We're discovering new books every day that the Roman Catholic Church took away. So on one hand, Paul is defeating meat, but then defending eating meat, which is death. Where does meat come from? You have to torture and murder animals to get to, to have meat. That's what you have to do. How are you going to say that's not torture? You slit an animal's throat and watch it bleed to death. What if I did that to you? What if the animals took over like in Planet of the Apes and they slit your throat and let you bleed to death? Yeah, but what about the sacrifices? Well, I explained that in part one. God never intended. He, God never wanted those sacrifices. He said he, he never wanted it. He wanted a he wanted an obedient heart. He said he never commanded sacrifice. That's something we did. And even if he did, and even if he did allow all them sacrifice, all them animals to be murdered, he clearly stated, he clearly showed his 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 true heart of love for his creation by sending his son to stop that madness. And here we are continuing it in the name of Jesus. Every time we sit out and eat, it's an abomination. It's an abomination, continuing the sacrifices, the continuing the unabated sacrificing of billions of animals while proclaiming that we accept the sacrifice. He is our lamb. He shed his blood so we would now, not just so you wouldn't have to die. He said he would end death. It doesn't say just end death for, for humans. That's not what the Bible says. Death, period. There will be no death, no suffering in the kingdom of God. That includes animals. Who told you to separate? Who told you that? Your flesh, your gluttonous flesh. And that's why you have diabetes. That's why you have gout. That's why you have stroke. That's why you won't be healed. That's why the church going to die completely when the next pandemic comes. When that Marburg virus, that hemorrhagic virus that clots up your blood, and going to have you having you stroking out with a hundred strokes until you die. None of your prayers are going to help you. Because you're under control of the belly guy. Look at this. First, second Timothy one ten. Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Jesus came according to Paul, to destroy death. So if he came to destroy death, why would we eat death? Why would we continue to support dying and death with what we eat, especially when there's no need to do so? No need to do so. No biological need to do so. And you know it's not. Revelation 21.4. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All of these things are gone forever. No more crying, no more pain. And that's why in the book of Isaiah, it states, it confirms it's not just talking about people, the ending of death and suffering and pain. This is what Jesus sacrificed symbolized. This is what he came to do. So if he came to do that, why are you eating contrary to the mission of your Lord and Savior? And then how dare you teach that he did contrary? So Isaiah 10 confirms that these scriptures I'm going over is not just talking about people. There's nothing you can get past me. You cotton picking food addicted Negro. This is my life. You can't get nothing past me. This is the gift that God has given me. I am the minister of wellness. The only Christian minister on the face of this earth at this time with a specific mission to prove you cannot eat fruits if you're infested with parasites. Those demons called parasites will sabotage your goals to be healthy. 
So the Minister of Wellness Ministries, we are affiliated with Zuma Nutrition. I have taken their Parasite Detox Package with great success, and I know it will help you relieve vicious cravings so you can eat the medicine foods of God without it feeling like it's torture. The Minister of Wellness dot com under store to purchase the Parasite Detox Package or click the link in the description box and pin comment section so the ministry can get the credit for your purchase. So there's no scripture you can get past me. You don't have no arguments against this. All you have is emotional mumbo jumbo. Exposing the slave theology of the black church concerning health and nutrition. I go, I talk extensively about the letters of Paul. I already know all the scriptures you're going to say. I used to use them. God knew what he was doing when he called me to be the minister of wellness. God made sure he knew what he was doing. God is smarter than you, fool. He knew what he was doing. He picked a man that was raised by the most, one of the most gluttony, a, a pastor who used to glorify in his gluttony. My dad glorified in his gluttony. The late great pastor Eddie Jordan, may he rest in peace. And I love him very much. And I still miss him to this day. But my father was legendary for his gluttony. Legendary. Oh, my God. My father was legendary. Pork chops after pork chops. Fried chicken, cheeseburgers, 10 hot dogs. Hellfire brimstone preacher. My father used to make fun of Muslims and anybody that didn't eat meat. He would stack up a 10 hams in a sandwich and eat it in, it, in his face. <laughs> I have the freedom in G. I can eat what I want. Look at you. Gee, God knew what he was doing when he called me. When he called the thing, he knew exactly what he was doing. Raised by a hardcore Christian. My daddy was a hardcore Christian. A hardcore gluttoner. My dad worshipped me. And taught me to be the same thing to where I was 260 pounds. Looking at vegetarians like they were fruitcakes. Like what type of man eat? What type of man? Man, that's, that's some girl stuff, man. You don't, I, you know, I can't say the other words. I'm like, man, you don't eat meat. You lost your mind. It's my mindset. And now here I am teaching this. My change to being this is just as extreme as the, the so-called Apostle Paul murdering Christians and then being murdered for Christ. The man went from murdering Christians to being murdered for defending Christ. That's the exact same thing that's similar to me. A, a meat-eating preacher raised by a hardcore meat-eating preacher, and now here I am, a defender against eating meat. According to the Bible, under the banner of Christianity, I'm telling you that put every time you put that animal flesh in your mouth, you're sinning against God. And you know you are because you know it's not healthy for you. You know you're only doing it because you love the taste of it. You know it. So Isaiah 10 proves that all the scriptures where it states that Jesus came to end death and destruction. It proves that you can't just say that's about people. He said, he said that the wolf and the lamb will lie together. The lion will eat hay like an ox. The snake will be able to, the child will be able to play with a snake. No more meat eating. So that confirms it. You can't separate animals from humans. The sacrifice of our Lord and Savior is for all of his creation. Isaiah 25 and 8. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe all tears away. He will remove forever all insults and mockery against his land and people. The Lord has spoken. Thank you, Yahshua. It's all of God's creation. 
That proves right there, Jesus. Jesus didn't eat no fish, didn't feed no fish, eat no animals or persecute no animals. You need to get the gospel of the Nazarene. Start there. And then there's many other writings. That the satanic Catholic Church stripped out of our Bibles and out of our scriptures. But Paul said, Paul said, Paul said, Minister Paul said, Paul, the most high God for those who have an ear to hear, he made sure that Paul contradicted himself on the issue of meat. And he made sure that he made sure that Paul contradicted for those who would have the ear to see. So while justifying meat eating in these scriptures in first Corinthians 15, 26 and second Timothy 1, 10, we just read where Paul stated himself, Jesus came to end all death and all suffering. Jesus came to end the enemy called death. So then, Paul, why would you have Why didn't you just listen to Brother James and Brother Peter when they were trying to teach you that the that the righteous way of eating is to not participate in the murdering of God's creation? Food at food addiction. Then, Paul, when he was trying to argue for your right to kill yourself with food, he stated in first Corinthians 10, 31. He shot himself in the foot. He said, listen, in the end, after we get done arguing, everything you eat, everything. And, and by the way, when Paul is arguing for eating meat, he's definitely not talking about what the Christian church is still doing. He's not talking about catfish. He's not talking about shrimp. Paul was defending your right to follow the meat eating instructions in the book of Leviticus. He's he's fighting for your right to do that. So that would mean that would mean you would have to be following those instructions. So that doesn't include your shrimp, your fried shrimp, your Chinese pork fried rice. It's not what Paul is talking about. OK, again, exposing the deadly slave theology of the black church. So if you're going to choose to kill yourself. Like Paul advocated for you to do, you must understand he was talking about those following the strict instructions of meat eating laid out in the Torah. Your cotton picking behind ain't doing that. And he wasn't even and he wasn't talking to people that are obese either. And fat and shit facing on coming pandemics. So before your fat, sick behind, your sickly behind with all that inflammation and mucus and pus built in your body, before you take Paul's letters to justify putting that death in your mouth, you better understand the proper context. Detox your blood today, brothers and sisters. This is the most important book that I have. OK, I have to scratch off stuff so that I have to I have to be smart. OK, detox from the medical decision. You all know what I'm talking about. Get that blood clean as soon as possible. Get this for yourself and buy a bunch and pass them out to your loved ones. The minister of wellness dot com, the minister of wellness dot com, the full detox protocol included. The minister of wellness dot com, the minister of wellness dot com. And then Paul said, eat and drink to the glory of God. This is 2023. We know that even a single piece of animal flesh stiffens your blood vessels, swells up your heart, immediately causing damage to your heart. If you didn't know it now, you know it from listening to this. So now you tell me when you sit down and have a hamburger, is that eating and drinking to the glory of God to put something in your body that immediately causes damage to your blood vessels? immediately constipate you immediately load your body with insulin like growth factor one which which is a result of animal protein regardless of how it's raised it immediately damages your cells 
immediately puts toxins in your colon. We have that knowledge today. Paul didn't have that back then, but God made sure that he shot himself in the foot so that those who are truly after the perfected way, because many of you aren't, you have caved into the belly God years ago. Every day you wake up, all you care about is eating your favorite junk food. And so you will defend your way of eating until it's the death of you. And you, and yes, it will be the death of you. That's all you think about. What you going to eat for lunch? What you going to eat for dinner? What you going to have for snacks? You despise the medicine foods of God. You worship your appetite. You worship your parasitic cravings. And you worship it so much you are a mocker of those who are seeking to please the Lord with how they eat. And the Lord God said, I have created medicines from the earth. He who is wise would not abhor them. Eat and drink to the glory of God. So if you put anything in your mouth, if you drink anything that you know is not going to help you to achieve optimal health, you are not glorifying the Lord according to your precious Apostle Paul, the defender of eating death. Then the Apostle Paul shot himself in the foot again because the Lord made sure he shot himself in the foot when he wrote in the book of Romans chapter two, verse one, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. In the Old Testament, if you sacrifice animals, those animals had to be perfect, without spot, without blemish. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice, without spot, without blemish. And so now on a daily basis, we are supposed to present our bodies as a living sacrifice every single day. And so how dare we present these sick, disease, pus-filled, mucus-filled, inflammation-filled bodies on a daily basis to our God. No wonder there's no difference in the healthy life expectancy of a so-called believer and a pagan. No wonder when the pandemic came, the believer and the non-believer died the same. No wonder there's no difference in the cancer rates. No wonder there's no difference in the heart attack rates. No wonder during the so-called Christian holidays, more Christians are rushed to the emergency room during Christmas and New Year's Eve and Thanksgiving. Those prayers for healing aren't even hitting the ceiling because we're not presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. That's your Apostle Paul. God made sure that the food addicted Apostle Paul who was not in good health himself, who had no understanding of the implications of meat on the health of the body. He was addressing a specific audience thousands of years ago, and he was speaking from his own food addiction. But at least he still was only talking about the animals that God permitted to be slaughtered for food. But he was not speaking about health. He was not aware. He was not aware that thousands of years later, that millions of Christians would be using his writings to kill themselves with food. Because I believe that had the brother understood the implications of how his letters would be used for great evil to commit genocide by diet against the body of Christ. I truly believe that he, he would have been more careful, but God made sure that the apostle Paul put them signs in there with those scriptures that I just went on. You have no excuse. We have way more knowledge about food than the apostle Paul, even about healthy food, the antioxidants and flavonoids in the fruit that we know turns off the blood supply that feeds tumors. 
that helps to dissolve plaque in the blood vessels. The knowledge we have today gives us no excuse to eat ourselves to death. We are without an excuse in 2023. We are without an excuse, brothers and sisters. You have no excuses. The Apostle Paul had an excuse. He didn't know. He was just speaking about they arguing about meat eating and he just speaking from his limited scope of perspective. You got diabetes, you got heart disease, you got high blood pressure. We living in the age of biological warfare. They weren't they didn't have gain of function labs during the Apostle Paul's time. They didn't have that. Well, you have these wicked wizards and sorcerers trying to manipulate viruses that didn't exist in Paul's time. Jesus did not eat fish and he did not feed the multitude fish. Jesus' entire mission was to abolish death. And that death and the abolishment of death is for all of his creation. The righteous, Proverbs 12, 10, the righteous cares for animals. The tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Killing and murdering animals by the billions for your chicken wings, your buffalo wings, your triple whoppers, your Big Macs, your KFCs, your breakfast sausages is cruel and it's wicked. And you know it is. And you know you're destroying your health. And James, the brother Jesus said, if you know what to do, if you know what to do, that's good for you. And you don't do it. It is a sin. And the wages of sin is death. The most important package that I have for this time is the immune support emergency stash. So this is when, not if, when the next deadly pandemic comes and, and when we're locked back down, you don't want somebody coughing in your household and they don't have anything for their immune system. This is the time to get it. It'll be impossible to have these in stock when the masses are panicking. It's already priced at 50% off. You don't need a promo code. Get your stash for your immune system. TheMinisterOfWellness.com TheMinisterOfWellness.com This is the second package that I have. The Black Health Disparities Package. If you have comorbidities, you're not going to stand a chance. This package covers obesity, blood pressure, immune, diabetes with the blood sugar. The big five brothers and sisters that are the most important, that is absolutely essential or you will be deficient. If you're deficient, you can't have an optimal immune system for the next pandemic. Vitamin D3 with K2, D3 with K2, B12, DHA, EPA, and zinc. Those are the big five, and we have those five available, organic, high quality, and potent. The Minister of Wellness.com on the store, the Minister of Wellness.com on the store. Or click the link in the description box and pin comment section. I'm in the motherland, brothers and sisters, until December the 4th, 2023. I'm preaching at churches every weekend. I'm visiting orphanages. We're providing fruit. We're recording and documenting everything. Help me help the poor. I'm not getting paid. There's no offering being taken up for me. That's not going on while I'm out here. This is strictly a missionary trip and I need you, our people here with the means to help me give your donation today using the many links that you see here on the screen or visit the minister of wellness.com forward slash give the minister of wellness.com forward slash give forsake the belly God brothers and sisters give it up you have nothing to stand on nothing to stand on to continue justifying that meat except tired old played out lies myths and slave theology. And so I pray that this mini sermon, I pray it was a blessing to you. You might have to rewind it and listen to it a few times because many of you, you get so mesmerized by the sound of my voice, you're not really listening. Read those scriptures, study those scriptures, every single scripture. I gave about 10 of them. And really listen and ponder on the truth that I've given you and get my new book exposing 
the deadly slave theology of the black church concerning health and nutrition, the diving to even more details. Make sure you watch part one on Jesus did not eat fish. He was a vegan. This is part two. Continuing that and you, know, you can see in your messages and angers and hate and comments in the comment section. If I think is worth my time, I'll make a response to it. You can join me every Sabbath day morning, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I go live for Bible reading, proving that the scriptures is a health book and we must apply biblical scriptures to our nutrition. You can come on there and tune in there. Like, share, like, share, like and share this video. Subscribe, hit the notification bell if you're new. Welcome to the only 100 percent plant based with a focus on fruits. Eat your fruits, juice your fruits and take your herbs. The only 100 percent plant based Bible based Christian ministry of its kind. And we are truly a Christian ministry of his kind, because I, when I say the word Christian, I'm not talking about the warp version. I don't have no issues with people that don't like using that term. Just bear with me, brothers and sisters. I understand. Just like people don't like saying they religious. I understand. OK, I agree. I agree with you. I agree that a lot of these terms that we use, I agree. But I'm when I say Christian, I'm strictly saying. A follower of Jesus Christ, Yahushua. Hamashiach, the African Hebrew Israelite Messiah that came to end death for all of God's creation. So let's be perfect as Yahushua Hamashiach was perfect and let's eat the perfected way, drink the perfected way. Let's walk out the fulfillment of of why our Messiah came and gave himself for us. Let's walk that out on a daily basis. And one of the best ways as believers that we can do that is eating the medicine foods of God and refusing to participate in the torture and murder of God's creation. And as you do that, and as you eat in a manner that produces justice and mercy for all, May the most high God of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahuwah the Elohim, may he bless you to live a long life in excellent health. It can, it will be yours.